maybe it is giving ourselves permission to slow down and enjoy the present moment and recognizing that we don't need to take on any additional projects in order to feel like enough. It's finding that content and joy and happiness and fulfillment in the everyday. Hi, friend. Welcome to Gather and Growth, a show created for passionate, growth-focused, rural women like you. From mindset work and building strong habits to exploring the unique joys and challenges of living rural, this is a show to leave you feeling joyful, inspired, and a little less alone. Together, we're on a journey of reaching for the most confident, healthy, and authentic version of ourselves, and I'm forever grateful to have you by my side. Whether you're currently running on a back road, shuffling kids to town, hopping along for a tractor ride, or three loads deep into folding laundry, grab yourself a nice coffee and let's dive in. Welcome back to Gather in Growth. I have been mulling over this podcast topic for a couple of weeks now because really it's something that I have been mulling over for more than a couple of weeks. And I think that this episode is going to have more questions than answers, but I want to bring you in on part of my journey that I'm considering And something that I'm noticing the deeper that I dive into this work and the more people that I work with and the more conversations that I have through the retreats, through masterminds, through coaching, I'm just starting to understand the depths and nuances that come with us tackling these big goals in small towns or wherever you're at. And that is the best way that I can boil it down right now. Is like this confusing intersection between chasing and content. If I rewind, let's say about a year ago, without necessarily attaching a date to it, my messaging in my brand on social media was very much goal focused, dream driven, like cheerleader, you can do anything. And I still very much to this day, 1000% believe that to be true. I wholeheartedly believe in your and our capacity to see a vision, whether it's a business or a nonprofit or sharing on social media or making a change in our community. I 1000% believe in our capacity to see an opportunity or a gap for something and go all in to make it happen. But when I sit back and reflect on what I have learned over the past, gosh, six months, if not more, especially since starting therapy, is untangling my own attachment between worthiness or feeling like enough and the connection to achievement or productivity or doing or being busy. And I think that so many of us struggle with that, whether or not we have a conscious awareness to it. I truthfully did not. I knew that I was an Enneagram 3. I knew that I was very goal-oriented. I knew that I was driven and passionate and went all in on anything that I did. But it wasn't until I started doing some work in therapy to understand just how deeply my subconscious was seeking validation or feeling like enough, or really, if you boil it down, like some people-pleasing tendencies of living into the expectations of other people, even when consciously I knew that what I was doing was for me. And so the more that I have started to detangle this within myself, the more that I'm starting to understand the ways that so many of us have our own version of that. And so it's been really interesting to figure out where these goals are coming from and what our motivations are behind them. And again, it's not like everything I believe has totally 180 because both can be true. And that's what's so hard. I I think even I have a really hard time boiling down everything that I understand even into like a coherent Instagram post right now because There's so many things that can be true at once, and it's so uniquely different for all of us. And so 
you know, over the work I've been doing over the last couple of months, I see so many women who are realizing that their big audacious goal, their big crazy dreams, maybe aren't quite exactly what they expected. Maybe it is giving ourselves permission to slow down and enjoy the present moment and recognizing that we don't need to take on any additional projects in order to feel like enough. It's finding that content and joy and happiness and fulfillment in the everyday. And I think that on one hand, it's easy for people to say like, oh, I just want to do this or I just want to do that. But then I see this other side of the coin that's so beautiful of like, oh no, you have fully identified what you want for your life in this season and you are going all in. And that is equally as valuable and important as you shoving that aside and chasing this external goal. But we have such an interesting attachment between what is enough and what is worthy and what is impressive. And social media is such an incredible tool. It has literally helped me build the business and life that I have today. So many friendships and relationships that I have that I hold so dear to my heart are through this beautiful tool of social media. But so many people are drowning in the comparison of what anyone else is doing. And it's making us feel really terribly about our very real life whether that's in terms of motherhood or whether that's in terms of business or whether that's in terms of what our farm looks like or what kind of meals we prepare or what our exercise regimen looks like. We see all of these tiny snippets of information from other people's lives and then suddenly compare our worthiness and value against these hundreds of representations of other people, which is, first of all, completely unrealistic. But I don't think our brains are meant to comprehend that much comparison and information in, gosh, if you even just think of 20 or 30 minutes of scrolling, which sounds like a lot, but goes by really fast. And let's say you're watching minute videos or 15 second videos or seven second videos. Think about how many stimuli you're taking in and how many people and how many representations of what success looks like that you're taking in in that 30 minute span. So it's no wonder that we're so confused about what we want and who we are and what we should be going after because we have thousands of examples to compare ourselves to. And this is where I think it becomes extra important to take that step back and figure out what we want. And I think when you ask most people what they want in life, or what their goals are, either they're not sure, they don't know where to start, or they have attached themselves to something that someone else said was important or something else that they saw somewhere else. And so what we've been able to do in masterminds and in coaching and in the retreat is reverse engineer that and figuring out what do you actually want your life to look like? What legacy do you want to lead? What relationships do you want to have? What do you want your average Tuesday to look like? And sure, like, what are those things that you want to accomplish? What are those goals that you want to bring to fruition? But you don't have to be busy to be enough. You don't have to write a New York Times bestselling book to be worthy. If I think about the example in my own life, you know, going from the classroom to the nonprofit space to then entrepreneurship, like, I had a very defined vision for what a productive workday looked like. And the blessing of this pregnancy is it's really forced me to (laughs) to reevaluate that by force. But it's got me thinking, like, why do I feel like I need to sit in this chair for eight plus hours a day in order to successfully do my job? Especially when like half the time I'm going on random tangents, like, scrolling social media or having side conversations. But if I know exactly what I want my day to look like, if I know what's important to me, then I can likely get the same amount of work done in a shorter period of time while also making space for these other things that I say are important. And I obviously know if you're working in 
a different setting. If you're not an entrepreneur or you don't have that freedom and flexibility, that this has a different nuance to it. But one thing my friend Kaya has been saying recently that stuck to me is like, what if it's not a problem? So for example, like there are some days where, you know, there's a lot of other things to take care of, or we have other things to do. And it's like, oh my gosh, I didn't even start working until two o'clock. And it's like, well, what if that's not a problem? What if that's okay? For the past week or so, I've been taking hot baths the second my kids leave the house in the morning. And sometimes I bring my laptop with me and I like sit in there and I work. And then sometimes I read a book. And if I think back to a year or so ago, I would have never allowed myself the opportunity to enjoy an hour in that way. Because I immediately would have been like, oh my gosh, I have my to-do list. I have these things to do. I have these things to do. I have these things to do. And those things are still true. But I've really refined what does success have to look like in this season and understanding that taking care of my body and doing the things that I need to do are equally as valuable to me as these things on my work to-do list. Hey friends, I'm going to be totally honest. In the past four months, my habits have gone out the window. Pregnancy be humbling like that sometimes. But now that I'm starting to feel like a functional human again, I am so ready to get back to the things that I know make me feel physically, mentally, and emotionally healthy and strong, which is why I am jumping into a new round of You Do You 82. You Do You 82 is a habit challenge where you get to choose six habits to intentionally build or break through the lens of progress over perfection for 82 days. This challenge is 1000% free and anyone can start anytime. However, I know it's always more fun when we do something like this together. I'm jumping in within the next couple of weeks and I think you should too. If you are ready to bring some intentionality into your life and truly take care of you throughout this summer, I invite you to join us. Tap the link in today's show notes to download your free Journey Through You Do You 82 workbook today. Whether or not you've done this before or anything like it, I believe that any time is a good time to invest in yourself. There's no need to compare yourself to where you've been, where you wish to be, or what anyone else around you is doing. This is for you exactly where you're at today. Again, you're going to tap the link in today's show notes, head to youduyou82.com to get started. I am so ready. Let's do this. And I think a lot of times we don't even necessarily define what our benchmarks are. We get trapped in this cycle of feeling like we're never doing enough because the to-do list we have in our mind is completely unrealistic whether it's in terms of being a mom or being a wife or being a farm wife or in our business or in our career, we have this ever-changing target of what success looks like. And we get trapped in this cycle of never being able to reach it because we don't actually know what enough or content or joy or success looks like in any of those areas. So we're using a measuring stick that's always moving and is always too long. And I think for a lot of us, when we have gone through most of our life, childhood to middle school, to high school, to college, we always had someone else defining what success looked like get an A on this test, pass this class, have these specific awards, like be successful in this sport, join this club, get this scholarship, do this thing. And so many of us have grown up and been conditioned to attach our value to these external accomplishments that we were praised for. Rightfully so. We worked hard for them. We did it. We accomplished it. That's awesome. But now we're carrying that into our adult lives without having those boundaries or those metrics. So we constantly feel like we're not achieving or doing or checking off enough boxes. And we hold ourselves to this standard that sets us up to feel like trash all the time. And so even though I haven't quite figured out what this looks like conceptually, because again, so many things are true. There's joy in the everyday moments. There is 
passion and accomplishment and achievement and the contentness of knowing exactly what you want your life to look like and then fully stepping into it. And I wholeheartedly believe that anything that is on your heart, any dream, any goal, any mission, that you can 1000% live into it. But I suppose the biggest question I'm posing to myself and others right now is why? Why do you want that thing? How does that fit into every other piece of your life? Because it's one thing to attach ourselves to a goal. And I think about myself last summer. Last summer in my business, I had everything happening at once. Last summer, I was doing a UDU82 reband. I was launching my website. I was launching the podcast. I was running six masterminds. I was preparing for my first retreat. All things that were my goals and all things I'm so proud and grateful that I put in the work to do. But I remember getting to the end of the summer and being like, I we literally canceled our family vacation because I had so many things on my work to-do list. I did not spend, oh gosh, my eyes are tearing up now. We did not spend nearly enough days at the pool that I wanted to. And here I have this blessing of entrepreneurship and this so-called time freedom and the flexibility to enjoy my summer with my kids in a way that I've never been able to before because summer used to be crazy for me in my previous job. And I totally abandoned that opportunity for all of these other goals. And they were all very important to me. But it was this wake-up call realization of, well, how important were they to me? I'm so glad they all happened. I worked so hard for all of them. I'm still reaping the fruits of their labor now. But it came at the expense of everything else that I said was important. So it's given me this total redefinition of what it means to set goals and put them on a timeline that has awareness of my energy and the rest of my life. Sure, I might not be able to do things as fast or as hard as if that was my only focus. But now I have such a deeper awareness of how this business and this mission that I've created and this heart that I have for serving and this generational impact that I want to have on our rural communities, how I want that to work alongside the vision that I want for my life and these relationships that I want to foster and these memories that I want to make. And so it's, it's interesting because it's not one or the other. I don't want to choose anymore. I don't want my family life to suffer at the expense of my business goals. And simultaneously, I want to continue pursuing my business goals. I don't want those to be at the expense of everything else as well. And so since then has been this kind of playing with, okay, I have I have this idea. And normally I'm like, I'm just going to jump in and figure it out. But now I take that step back to be like, okay, how does this fit into everything else? And so, again, sometimes I feel like I have all of these contradictions in my brain because I believe so many things to be true at once, and I think that's okay. And so this episode is for sure not here are the five steps that I have to help you figure this out, or here are the 10 tips and tricks. This is me bringing you alongside this journey as I figure out this interesting intersection between chasing big goals, big dreams, building this life and legacy that I want to have right alongside joy and adventure and family time and time for reading and taking care of my health and nurturing my mental health every step of the way. So I challenge you as I lately often have, to think about what do you really want? What are those crazy, big, audacious goals? Celebrate them. And then what are those small moments? What is that contentment? And understanding that choices have to be made along the way. And that choosing one or the other maybe doesn't have to be the case, maybe isn't right or wrong. But you get to decide what that looks like. 
And for some people that might be in this season, I'm going to go balls to the walls on this thing. And for some people that might be, you know what, in this season, my time and attention needs to be directed elsewhere. And I'm going to celebrate that. I'm not going to adjust that. I'm going to fully own that. If that's being you know, a stay at home mom, and that is your focus right now. If it's if it's homesteading, if it's getting involved on the farm, if it's whatever it may be, oftentimes when we recognize that that's where we're meant for, we add these negatory words to it, like "oh, I'm just." Even though we know that's what we want, we like shame ourselves within ourselves, or even out loud, or we like justify it, or we validate it. But no, that is your dream right now. That is where you're meant to be. That is your goal. That is being intentional. That is something to celebrate. So I feel like at this point, I'm kind of going on side tangents. My biggest takeaway is that I right now am just really considering what is this confusing intersection? What is this in between of encouraging you to bring your big goals and dreams to life while also bringing your big goals and dreams to life in what your home looks like and what your life looks like. That confusing intersection between chasing and contentment, redefining why you're doing the things you're doing, having that self-awareness to know where validation and accomplishment and achievement and enoughness, where that's coming from, How you're defining that. Is it for someone else? Is it for the internet? Is it for the approval of your family or your friends or your community? I think just taking that step back to ask the hard questions, which I got forced into via therapy. (laughs) Again, 10 out of 10 recommend therapy to anyone and literally everyone. There is no qualifier for needing therapy. As a reminder, everyone needs therapy, it is good for everyone. But if that's not the route you feel like you need at this point, asking yourself these questions or getting connected with a mastermind, pursuing something like coaching, whether it's me or someone else, getting looped into a retreat, things like that can give you the opportunity to have that self-reflection and gain that awareness and just try to figure out what you really want and then fully step into that. No matter what it looks like, no matter what it is. No matter whether it's what you thought you would be doing or whether life is guiding you another way, I challenge you to think about what intentionality looks like, what your dream Tuesday looks like, and then start building a life around that. That's all for now. On the topic of retreat and masterminds, I will be opening retreat registration this month in May. The next retreat will be March of 2024 on the beach somewhere warm. It's going to be like a spring break getaway that we will all need after winter. Um, My next mastermind session will be running July into October before baby comes. Registration for that will be opening in June. So keep your eyeballs open for both of those opportunities because I would sure love to welcome you into that community if you're not already. So Until next time, thank you so much for listening. Thank you for being here. Thank you for every time you share these episodes or this podcast with someone else in your circle or on social media. It really, truly means the world to me. I am so, so, so forever grateful for you. Have a great week. Have I told you today how much I appreciate you? I'd like to imagine this was a meaningful backyard patio kind of chat between friends sipping LaCroix at sunset. If you enjoyed today's show, please take a screenshot to share or forward this episode to a friend. You can also find me at Emily Rushel over on social to continue the conversation. It's truly a joy to hear what tidbits and takeaways made an impact on your day. As always, all links and resources mentioned in today's episode can be found in the show notes listed below or over at emilyrushell.com. Special thanks to my podcast manager, Jill Carr, for the time and love she puts into producing gathering growth for this community. What a blessing it is to be on this personal growth journey together. Forever grateful for you.